from a breakfast. It's coming up to 15 minutes away from nine. Well, let's talk about the Mongol Rally uh, 2012. What the heck is it? And uh, why is Amy Whitcroft uh, going on this um, uh, this crazy car journey? Amy joins us via <laughs> a Skype video this morning in Wellington. Good morning to you, Amy. Hi. Tell us about what, what exactly is the Mongol Rally? Right, so the Mongol Rally started about eight years ago. I believe it was some crazy British types. Um, it, it sounds like the kind of thing they do. Anyway, and the idea is to drive a small crappy car from, well, starting in, uh, not actually in London, but at Goodwood Racetrack um, down on the south coast, and driving it all the way through to Ulaanbaatar, which is the capital of Mongolia. It's about 10,000 miles, or we've heard tell approximately a third of the Earth's circumference. Wow, a long, That's it. a long, long way, and um, would be a challenge, I suppose, for any race car driver or you know experienced rally tourer. Um, but who goes on this? Um, this is everybody. Apparently, the median age is somewhere around thirty-one, but but people of all age groups. And the idea is, it's it's widely regarded as a relatively stupid thing to do, and it is a charity fundraiser. They've raised, I think, it's almost. Two million pounds or something like that for charity so far, um, but it's anybody who'd like to do something a bit interesting, and particularly because there's no route and there's no support, so you just have to try and get there. You can get there any way you like. Some of the routes take but a matter of you know weeks if you're lucky. Some of them will take you months, and you may never get there at all. Mm. It kind of depends how the local border guards and conditions are feeling. Yeah, I mean, it is mostly men. We have noticed that. That's the stats. But yeah. otherwise, broad range of people go seem to go on it. <laughs> and, and and you don't you don't drive a flash car either, do you? No, race rules stipulate that it's got to be the kind of car that your grandmother would be a little bit ashamed of driving down to the local supermarket in. <laughs> um, so it's currently the car has to be less than ten years old um, when entering Mongolia, and that's because they don't want people dumping cars there. Um, but otherwise, one point two liters or Less. Uh, we've got a 1.3 Jimny, which is this tiny little 4x4, and they're allowing us to drive that. But um, you can get around it by driving either 125cc motorcycles or by driving um, a small number of emergency vehicles that the Mongolian government needs every year. So every year people try to get there in fire trucks and ambulances as oh, well. That's a very cool idea. And did you source the car in the UK? Yes, we did, indeed. It's um, living in the garage of the dad of a good friend of ours. Mm. And, and, so, yeah. and, of course, when, when, you say, um, when you say ours, uh, you're not doing this alone. No, no. I'm doing this with my partner and now co-driver, uh, Dane Foster, um, the a somewhat eccentric um, Canuckian sysadmin, of all things. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and you've called yourself the Lemur uh, Attack Force. That's your team indeed. name. Indeed. Um, Indeed, but but I mean, I'd imagine, you know, that that this is you know you haven't done anything like this before. What prepares you for anything like this? Well, we've gotten around this by doing. We, we were going to do all kinds of prep, learn Russian for one, or at least a smattering of it. Get fit. I was going to learn how engines work. Um, we've gotten all around all of that by actually doing no prep. <laughs> so we're not feeling very stressed out about how much there is to do because we've done nothing. We're currently involved in something that feels Kafka-esque um, with the Russian embassy um, in, in trying to extract from them a visa. Um, but otherwise, uh, the Mongolians are lovely. So so we've got a visa organized. We just need to actually get it from them. Um, and and that's pretty much it. So, yeah, we're going to we, – the route we're taking is going um, – so there's a big party at Goodwood for the launch, and then there's another huge party in the Czech Republic where they hire out a castle and fill it with DJs and Mongol rallies and hangers on. Wow. And then from there, that's where everybody spreads and they split. So um, the more adventurous people take either the central route through some of the stands or the southern route, which is through, like, all of the countries. Yeah. It's like 25 countries or something ridiculous and it takes months. Um, and we're going through Russia, so we're going to head up through Eastern Europe sort of Poland, uh, I believe there'll be a little bit of Lithuania and Latvia in the mix, and then we're basically going to drive east until we hit Mongolia. So that's Russia. The, through that um, through that great expanse that you see on the map and you go, what is going on there? What the heck is there? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're going to find out. out. <laughs> You're going to find out, aren't you? 
<laughs> yes, apparently lots of polizzi. We're going to have lots of fun encounters with local people. Yeah. So um, what do you need in order to make sure that this gets off the ground without a hitch? Um, well, there's a couple of things where people can choose should they wish to help in, in a number of ways. Um, gear is, is always useful, so people could contact us if they had some gear that they'd like to throw at us. But the big thing is, um, you know, we're fundraising for us. It's not a... It's not a cheap adventure coming from New Zealand, mm. um, but also this is a charity fundraiser, um, and our website, uh, which is um, limoattackforce.co.nz, has details about the charities we're supporting. It's one Mongolian, um, as stipulated by the organisers, and three New Zealand, as chosen by us. Okay. So yes, people can people can donate either to us and our team costs or to um, uh, our charities. Uh, tell, tell, tell us about the charities. So we're supporting um, the the Mongolian charity is the Lotus Children's Centre Trust. It's something sorry, it's something close to that. You can tell I've not had coffee yet. Ch- charitable um, and trust. And that's yeah. helping. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's helping kids in Mongolia get you know educated and fed and sheltered and stuff. So yeah. that's pretty laudable. And um, then the New Zealand ones we chose um, uh, the rich. Christchurch appeal. That's the Red Cross. Of course, because that's kind of a big deal. Earthquake appeal. Yep, yep. And yep. any other? And we chose. Yep, we chose two more. Um, the SPCA. Yep. Because uh, animals often get forgotten about, and Women's Refuge Wellington. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, Great. so people are encouraged to to help out with those if they would like to. So uh, some great charities there. So so you can donate, obviously, uh, money, all the details at lemoattackforce.co.nz. Um, gear would be helpful as well. Um, I'm sure there's a list of certain, certain things that you perhaps need up there on that website. Um, mm-hmm. Wow. So six weeks away is when you depart, yeah? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. We're, we're going to have a, a wee bit of a shindig at the end of June as a sort of <clears throat> launch meet our mascots because we've had two beautiful mascots made for us by a local artist. Meet the mascots and kind of launch us off into the chaos of, of July as we panic and the visas fall over. Something will happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, one thing you can count on it. Nothing. So, um, I mean, okay. it won't, won't, I'm sure it'll, it'll you know, all happen and you'll get there, but there are going to be some trials <laughs> along the way. I think you can count on that. Uh, prepare for Pretty that. much. It's, yeah. it, the, the organisers do say, look, if, if you want to go on a holiday that's not going to stress you out where things are going to go to plan, don't do this one. <laughs> well, um, you're very, very brave, and uh, we look forward to following your progress. Now, I guess you'll be all techni- as technically hooked up as you can so you can keep people um, informed along the way, yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. We, we reckon we're probably one of the geekier teams ever to do it. So we're, we're, we're using the power of technology instead of the power of learning languages, for example. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be sending in – well, I'm, I'm a science blogger or blogger in my spare time, so I'm going to try and be writing stuff around that while we travel. But um, we'll also be sending in Twitter updates and things. And the cool thing is that the adventurists, the, um, the organizers of this, um, have a map. And they map where people are according cool. to the geotags for the updates that they get. So you can see, and they send out newsletters with all the stories and stuff. So yes, one can stalk the happenings um, quite a lot. Fantastic! I'll definitely I'll be glued to it. Amy, thanks so much for <laughs> uh, joining joining us today, telling us all about the Mongol rally. Uh, that website again, lemoattackforce.co.nz. Amy Whitcroft, thanks. Cool. Thank you so much.